well, 84, nearly 85. Um, I'm an ex-nurse. Um, I retired in 82. No, I didn't. I retired in 92. That sounds better. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, 92 I retired. Yeah. Um, I worked at, first in London at St John's Wood, um, Hospital of St John and St Elizabeth, which was overlooking Lord's Cricket Ground, which was very nice when the cricket was on because we went up on the roof and watched the cricket from up the top. Um, and then when I moved down here, I went to work at the West Kent. And then, of course, we moved to the new hospital, Maidstone Hospital. And uh, I spent my first night up there on my own with one patient. <laughs> it was lovely. Um, I'm being treated for cancer of the colon. Um, I ch changed my doctors at home because I decided I wanted a lady doctor. Um, I, have, I wasn't feeling ill, but I just wanted to change. I'd had the same one for a long time. And um, the first day I saw her, um, we were talking for a little while and she said to me, she said, I think you've got cancer. And I said, well, I haven't had any pain anywhere. I said, I'm fine. So she said, no, she said, I think we'll send you for an x-ray. And apparently I'd had the cancer for about 10 years. <laughs> no sign of pain at all, nothing. In the, in the, all in, in my colon. So um, they took me in and they didn't cut me open because I've got several scars on my tummy. Um, they put a need this did it with a needle and drew the cancer out. And uh, I've been fine ever since. Um, but yeah, well, first of all, it's, it's greeting all, all the people that we've met here before, you know, it's, it's lovely. And um, we have cups of tea and biscuits and things like that. And then um, I have some massage on my feet, as several of us have massages. And... Um, then we, we can do painting or we can do puzzles. We can do whatever we like. And the girls here are very, very good. They have some wonderful ideas. I've got a little fellow at home that I call Eric. And he's made out of a, a nylon stocking and filled it with uh, wood chippings and stuck two eyes on and made a nose. And then... Um, on the top of his head, put grass seed. Well, mine has now got grass seed this high. They're absolutely gorgeous. Uh, and we do all things like that, you know. We do knitting. I knitted some dolls for my grandchildren for Christmas. And it's, um, and then we, we have dinner, which you spend ages over chatting. And um, at the, the moment, we're doing uh, puzzles, crossword puzzles. And uh, in fact, we can do what we like, really. I mean, one man's fast asleep, bless his heart. But you know, he he needs that sleep. Um, no, it, it it is good. And also, seeing some of them makes you realise that you're not as bad as you think you are. <laughs> I 
my children mostly. <laughs> yes, because I've got I've got two children who've got cancer. So I worry about them. But keep in touch with I've got four children, keep in touch with all four every day. Um, to let them know that I'm alright, you know. Um, because if I don't, like this morning, I forgot to ring them at 8 o'clock. <laughs> and at 5 past 8, one of my sons was ringing me, Are you alright, Mum? <laughs> so, and that's the first time I've done that. I've forgotten to ring. I was getting ready to come here. And uh, I forgot about it. My daughter was diagnosed, her, her daughter was three when she was diagnosed and she's 28 now, so she's had it all that time, but now they've told her that she's come to the end of her treatment, she won't be having any more treatment, so, and she's pleased about it, because she came over to see me on Saturday and she drove her car herself. So, um, you know, I, I was happy for her. She did it's lovely. She said, all that clogging up in my brain, she said, it, it's all gone. She said, I can think, you know, which is something that I wanted to. Well, if I can't think, I'd be useless. Um, my brother said, uh, my brother, my son's had it for about three years. And uh, he's got cancer of the blood. Um, and his back keeps um, breaking. So he can't walk or do anything. He has to crawl along the floor. And uh, they take out the bone marrow and mix it with something. And it, he's all right for quite a little while, you know. But he's having. Um, Sometime soon, he's going into hospital up in London, and my youngest son and my eldest daughter both match him, and so they're going to. One of them is going to donate some stuff to put with his bone marrow, so that his back doesn't keep breaking. probably is having all my children. They're absolutely wonderful. And also the grandchildren that go with with the children and great grandchildren I've got now. I've got five great grandchildren. And the eldest one is sixty. So and the youngest is two. They're absolutely gorgeous. I seem to have had a very placid life, um, except when my husband left me. <laughs> um, I, I worked, I enjoyed my work, I did night work, because the neighbour was able to keep an eye on the children for me, although the eldest was 18 when I went back to work. Um, I don't know, I just seem to sail along, you know. I'm very happy go lucky, yeah. you know. I think of all the nice things rather than anything that's not nice. Well, um, some of the patients that are in here they really do, I can't. And one of them, funny enough, lives near me. I don't know whether you've seen him, spoken to him. The one in the... <coughs> he's in a wheelchair. He's paralysed all over. 
and uh, I pass his house because I've got a scooter um, whenever I go to the doctors or go out shopping and uh, I always wave he can't wave back obviously because he can't move um, but then when I come in here he's telling them the tales of how I streak across the road and streak down the road <laughs> you can't do that in a small scooter but there he, he takes great joy in telling those tales it's lovely Yes, I have. Um, I'm a Roman Catholic. Yeah. Yes, and, and that helps me a great deal. Yeah. Mm. I was brought up that way. It's in the family. We've got nuns in the family. We've got priests in the family. <laughs> I have to behave myself. To grow up. I was honest to goodness. <laughs> what can I say? I was so innocent. You, you've, it's unbelievable when I think of it. I really was. But they were. I was enjoying life. I was a student. We'd all lived in the nurses' home together. We used to get out go out of an evening. It was uh, run by nuns, but of course they always went to bed early anyway. And uh, the doors of course were locked when we came back, so we climbed a fire escape and got in through the bathroom window. So, you know, I had a, I really had a good life. I need to stay alive to look after my two children who got cancer. So I won't have any treatment for it. I won't have any chemotherapy really? treatment, no. Could, could you talk to me a little bit more about that? Well, I've seen what the, what the treatment has done to them. And sometimes after they've had treatment, it shuts them down for a week or more. And I couldn't cope with that. Um, I'd like to know what I'm doing and why I'm doing it, you know what I mean? Um, and I wouldn't be able to keep an eye on them either, which to me is the most important thing. Um, so now, I, and I thought, think at my age, it's too old to go with the treatment like that, you know? I mean, a few years ago, people at my age were dead, but. So, no, I think I've been very lucky to go on as long as I have. It's a very noble decision. And, pay, and paying free as well. Yeah. Because I don't, no, no sense in the pain. I think I always wanted to be a nurse. I'm sure I did. I know the war was on for a good part of my childhood. I spent it down in air raid shelters. But um, as far as I can remember it, I always wanted to be a nurse. Um, 
I think it would be with my dad's youngest brother. He's 92, but now bless his heart. And uh, he's only a few years older than I am. Um, and we were great friends. And he was in the RAF during the war. Then he went out to live in Zimbabwe. And I went out there for holidays with them. And then, of course, I came home when all the troubles started. And uh, he's living up in the Midlands now near his daughter. Um, I should love to see him. I really would. Um, if we were to have for me, what would we eat? I don't know, to tell you the honest truth. Probably fish and chips or something like that. <laughs> Thank you. 